there folks, Petula here. Do you know what psychological safety is? And do you know why agile teams cannot work without psychological safety? Well, according to the Center for Creative Leadership, psychological safety at work is defined as a shared belief held by members of a team that others on the team will not embarrass, reject, or punish you for speaking up. By its very definition, you can see that psychological safety is desirable in any workspace. And in the recent years, countless organizations are turning to Agile as the holy grail for innovation, for unlocking customer insights, and for getting faster time to market. Well, in Agile, the work is done collaboratively with a lot of feedback, ideally in teams, people really working closely together. And for that, I guess you can see that psychological safety is beyond uh, good and important. It's actually a prerequisite. To understand why there is no agile team without psychological safety, we already saw what psychological safety is. Now let's define what is an agile team. Agile teams are a group of people with a shared mission, a common goal. They are accountable collectively, not individually, and they trust each other. Operative word here being trust. Not to mention that the Agile Manifesto calls out for collaboration, motivation, trust, improvement. Almost all Agile frameworks really, they will um, mention respect, feedback, and courage as important values to adopt and live when working in Agile ways. And that is because Agile is about improving, adapting in the face of change. And how can you improve when you cannot even point out what's broken? Why is Agile not really possible without psychological safety? Well, Agile requires dialogue for collaboration, for feedback. It requires openness and courage to speak up, to disagree even. And, you know, all that will happen inside of teams, of course, but it also happens outside with the stakeholders, which are customers and customer representatives and with other teams. In Agile, processes and tools are not that important. Remember, folks, it's the very first Agile value, individuals and interactions over processes and tools. So when a tool or a process is helpful, that's great, keep on using it, but they are less important. The people and what they can create together, that's what truly matters. Meaning when a process stands in the way of, in the way of greatness, quite honestly, the process can and should be either bypassed or modified. Also, Agile teams are making decisions every single day and making decisions implies accountability, which implies levels of autonomy. If you're going to bear the weight of things not working, you should then bear the right of deciding how you are going to be doing things. So as you can see, Agile teams operate in a high exposure environment of ideas and of actions. If there is no psychological safety there, people will feel too vulnerable and then they will be afraid of bringing their points of view and their uniqueness. And with that, the team, and if you bring it at scale, the whole organization cannot learn. And learning and adapting is how you can positively and successfully face change. How to help with psychological safety. If you are an agile leader, such as a scrum master, a coach, a manager, I'm gonna suggest three things that you could do, and all of them have to do with reframing something else into learning. Here is what I mean by that. The first one is creating, is moving from silence to learning. If you want to know the ideas, you want people to speak up about what's wrong, about what could be better, just asking people their opinions might not be enough. Um, you know, they might still be afraid of the repercussions, they might still feel exposed. So you want to create a way in which people can be highly active in speaking up their minds, but not too exposed. And you also don't want anonymity either. If you're relying on anonymity, that might be an indication that your spaces are not yet so safe. 
So create different ways for people to be able to share their thoughts. Some people like to speak, some people uh, prefer to write things around and so respect that. And whenever you have meetings and work sessions, create the environment in which they can contribute in their favorite way. And maybe even more so, make sure that people first interact and share ideas in smaller group first where they feel more at ease before you bring all those ideas to a bigger forum that is a great way for people to learn safety to learn that it's okay that is desirable and that it's good that they share their thoughts the second thing is normalizing learning from failure and for doing that you don't want to just single out failures you want to single out the learning that comes from it. You want to facilitate sessions and coach people in a way that they all understand that any result is valuable. What I usually do is establish a learning routine. It can be at the end of your iterations, it can be after um, a big event worth mentioning, like a, a major release or a big crisis. The point is that um, people will get comfortable looking back and drawing learning from it. At some point, they will become, you know, they will not even care if you're talking about a mistake or a big win. They will just be excited and primed to learn from any situation at hand. The third thing to try is actually a reminder that conflicts are opportunities to learn. When you facilitate discussions properly, conflict can be celebrated and shifted into a productive direction this agreement becomes, you know, they just mean different perspective, just that, no big drama. One of the key mindsets to support your team's turning conflict into learning is reminding everybody that no one really needs to win. It's not my idea versus your idea. It is actually two things. One, ideas without owners. Once a suggestion, an idea is given, it now belongs to the group collectively depersonified. Two, remember that all ideas have merit, every single one, and that all ideas have fault, every single one. You can literally like take a suggestion and immediately start a whiteboard with two columns, like in the pros and cons list. You want to help people understand that they can combine ideas, dissect ideas, and create little Frankenstein's one, you know, a piece of this idea with a piece of that idea. And that works even in conflicting suggestions. So if someone is saying, okay, here's my suggestion to make this thing faster, and here's my suggestion to make things with a better quality, well, what if we don't have to choose? We wanna get faster and with more quality. What could that look like? I hope that you found something useful in this video today. Um, you know, psychological safety is something that can always be created no matter where you work. And when people understand the power of safe spaces, pretty much everybody becomes an ambassador of those ways of working. As always, you can find a little bit more in the blog post that I'll link for you in the description. And I'll stop the video here for now and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.